يقول الله في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا ولما راى المؤمنون الاحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم الا ايمانا وتسليما من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهد الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين ان شاء ويعذب المنافقين ان شاء او يتوب عليهم ان الله كان غفورا رحيما we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us the opportunity to come over here and remember him one more time my brothers, I can't emphasize enough that out of all the people that could have been here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chose you to be here to remember him. And for that, we say Alhamdulillah. And we thank you, brothers, for sacrificing your time and your energy for being here. We have our special guests who are currently just getting ready at the moment, and they'll be joining us in a few minutes. We have Akhi Iman, and we have his, uh, his team including Rabbi Abu Sufyan and uh, a few other brothers, basically. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace and salutations upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we began by also uh, reciting some of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereby he says, there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent uh, uh, example for anyone whose ho uh, hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. And when the believers saw the uh, com companies, the parties, the group, they said, this is what Allah and his messenger وسلم, had promised us. And Allah and his messenger spoke the truth and it increased them only in faith and acceptance. Among the believers are men, men true to what they promised Allah. Among them is he who has fulfilled his vow to the death. And among them is he who, has aw who awaits his chance. And they did not alter or change their terms of their commitment by any changing or alterations. That Allah may reward the truthful for their truth and punish the hypocrites if he wills or accepts their repentance. Indeed, Allah is forgiven and merciful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it on to our brother Abu Baidah, Abu Baida, Zakaria, and he's going to speak a bit about uh, Brahmi Bible. Bismillah rahman rahim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد ثم آمين يا رب العالمين the brother already recited the beautiful verse and only one verse I will touch on and inshallah I will spend the next few minutes on that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Minal mu'minina rijalun sadaqu ma'ahadullah alayhi Amongst the believers are men men who have been truthful to the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not boys, men. So that's the first indication many of us want to be known as men isn't it? Not boys, we don't like being called little boys we like being called men. And the next bit is, they have been 
truthful to the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not waver. Rather, Allah says, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَغِرُ Of them, some have completed their vow and died upon that. الشُهَدَاء وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَغِرُ Amongst them are those who are still waiting for their time to come and for their time to shine and for their time to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبَدِيلًا They do not change in their determination. They don't waver like most of us who waver as if we today are strong and when the wind and storm comes we move out of the way. Who are these men? What has made their determination so powerful, so strong? What has made their istiqama, their steadfastness upon the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal so strong until they died upon that? What made them successful? These men were none other al-rijal al-rasul the men around the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these were the illustrious companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'da a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim muhammadun rasulullah wal-lazina ma'ahu ashidda'u wala al-kuffar muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those with him the believers are Ashiddu ala al-kuffar Stern and harsh against the disbelievers Those who are fighting against Islam Ruhma'u baynahum They are merciful towards each other Tarahum rukka'an sujjada Yabtahuna fadlam min Allahi wa ridwana You can see them bowing and prostrating Making ruku'an sujood To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For what purpose? Yabtahuna fadlam min Allah Seeking the bounty of Allah, seeking the favor of Allah, Waridwana and His pleasure. They always want to make Allah happy, all the time. As soon as they declare, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, making Allah happy was their number one priority. And these are the qualities that we find in that verse, in the last verse of Surah Al Fat. Where Allah describes the companions and their characteristics which we need to acquire as well. See ma hum fi wujuhum min asar sujood. And the very, the very important thing in this in this passage is their prayer, their salawat, their relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was through the prayer. It was so strong, it was so strong that when they prayed and offered their prayers. Birds would come and sit on them thinking they were statues and stones. Yet most of us will be fidgeting and itching and looking left and right. And these are the qualities needed for your and my istiqama. For you and me to be steadfast until our last moment. This is among some of the qualities you need to have, otherwise you won't pass. To gain your success is through these qualities. And istiqama is so important in our religion. One of the young companions said that when the Rasul received the revelation, wahif, the Quran from Allah regarding istiqama, i.e. one verse, Allah says, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتِ And stay firm and be steadfast upon this deen. The hair of the Prophet ﷺ turned grey because of the gravity of the commandment which is to be staying firm until your death. So don't waver brothers. Even if your fellow brothers and friends fall and you try to pick them up and they don't get up, you keep going. Sometimes it's your friends who hold you back. المرو على ديني خليلي فلينظر أحدكم ما يخالل. A man or a person is upon the religion of his friend. So choose your friend wisely. Choose your friend wisely. Recently, recently we spoke about Abu Zar al Ghifari رضي الله عنه, one of the legends of Islam. One of the legends of Islam. In fact, he was the fifth man to accept Islam. The fifth man. 
And the very first person in the history to say Assalamu Alaikum was none other than Abu Dhar al Ghifari radiallahu an. And the very first person to proclaim Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and get beaten up by it because of uttering those words. Because it's not cheap. These words are not cheap. They have conditions on the La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is conditions. But I want to share one final reminder from him who heard his beloved companion, meaning Rasulullah who said, لا تحقلن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق Do not belittle any good deed. Do not belittle any good deed. Even if you was to meet your brother with a smiling face, don't belittle that good deed. Perhaps that good deed is your ticket to Jannah. Your hundreds and hundreds of salawat, your charity, your Ramadan, your Hajj, your Umrah may have not been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you smiling at another Muslim, making him smile in return, there is a psychological effect. Perhaps he's going through some difficulty and you smiling at him, being a stranger, you might motivate him to continue in his life. So smile at your fellow Muslims. Smile at your fellow Muslim brothers, not at your sisters. Yeah? Sisters smile at sisters. Brothers don't smile at sisters. That's my final reminder, inshallah. May Allah make us of those who meet together, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to actually share one last hadith which is very beautiful. Inna Allah yaqulu yawm al qiyamah. Indeed, Allah will say on the day of judgment, Aina al mutahabbuna bi jalali. Where are those who wish to love one another for my sake? Al yawma uzilluhum fi zilli. I will shade him. I will shade him in the shade and there will be no other shade, other shade than my shade, subhanAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shade us on that great day, that mighty day when the sun will be upon our head, just above our head and we will be sweating, some of us up to our knee, uh, ankles, some of us up to our knees, some of us up to our waist, some of us will be drowning in our own sweat because of the gravity of that day, which is going to be 50,000 years long. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this amongst the many gatherings that we come and meet for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love each other for, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we smile at each other for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم وصل اللهم وسلم بارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين آمين رب العالمين السلام عليكم yo you guys got no energy come on man give me salams no one say it back السلام عليكم السلام ما شاء الله you don't see the videos at the end when we do the takbir and everyone says it aloud together you don't see that Inshallah, we're gonna do that. It no, 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 it doesn't matter. We're gonna get shut down. No, no, no. Let's do this. Let's do this. It doesn't matter. Let's do this. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure you preserve that energy for then. Yeah. Just quickly, I'm gonna talk about a couple, couple things before Amen comes on. Uh, one of the main things is obviously when it comes to your brotherhood and companions and the people that you're around. Yeah. So I'll start off with the hadith from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what it is is every single one of you is gonna go to paradise. He, that's what he said to the companions, and I'm saying it to you. Every single one of you is going to go to paradise. When the companions looked at each other, they were all happy, overjoyed. And the Prophet Muhammad stopped and said, Except those of you who don't want to. Companions looked at each other confused and said, Well, who wouldn't want to go to paradise? It's pretty straightforward. You really want to go to paradise, you know what to do. So when, when they asked um, oh, Rasulullah, who wouldn't want to go to paradise? He responded with those of you who choose not to listen and obey. It's pretty clear, clear, everyone knows what they need to do to get to paradise. It's a, the Quran, if you look at it, it's like your rule book. I'll give you another example, yeah? When your mom tells you not to jump on the sofa when you're young, don't jump on the sofa, don't jump on the sofa, and you carry on jumping on the sofa, then eventually you fall and you bang your head, and then you're going back to your mom crying, crying, oh, I've hurt myself, I've hurt myself. <laughs> oh, sorry. Allah loves you 70 times or more than your mother. So when he tells you to do something, everyone's always questioning why, why, why. We should listen to it because it's for a greater thing. So one of the main things is Allah tells you, don't get into uh, relationships out of marriage. So when you get into relationships out of marriage, it always goes left. Nine times out of ten, unless you're a lucky few, 
Nine times out of ten, it goes left. Everyone end up getting hurt and depressed, and you ask Allah, why, why, why did I go through this? Which is wrong, which is haram, by the way. You start asking why. Allah told you, don't do it. There are stuff in play for you, for you not to get into no haram relationship and silliness, um, which he knows that if you did, when you go through that certain kind of pain, you get depressed. Everyone's going through mad pain and start getting depressed, and then I would be like, some people start bl blaming Allah. Start saying, Allah, why did you do this to me? Why did you do this? He, he, he warned you. He told you, don't. Don't talk to that sister. Don't free mix with them. Don't talk to them privately. Don't get their number. Don't get their Snapchat. And why does any, everyone, everyone ignores everything that Allah told you, and then you end up getting hurt just the way you think. But then there's goodness in it. Allah says, turn back to him. It doesn't matter what it did, doesn't matter what, what madness you've got up to. Ask for forgiveness and Allah will give. So turn back to him. They said, if you crawl towards him, he'll walk towards you. If you walk towards him, he'll run towards you. If you run towards him, he'll come to you at speed. The biggest thing you can do, the worst thing you can do is question the mercy of Allah, you know. Don't underestimate the power of du'a. So... That's another thing that Eamon tries to go around doing with us. We'll go from place to place and find brothers like you lot that need help or advice and try to advise you lot. But it's kind of sad that, you know, Eamon's not from around here and then he'll get brothers coming up to him and saying, oh, I want to speak to you. Let me quickly tell you something. I'm, oh, this is happening at home. But you lot should be brothers to each other. You lot should be there for each other before anyone else comes from the outside. Do you know why we do the takbirat at the end of events? It's to show that, that unity, everyone's together, say Allahu Akbar loud and then it sh it's, it's only that loud because we're all doing it together, that unity can make it as powerful as it is. But then, look how us lot are now bro. Everyone's against each other, if, a, if two brothers got into a fight, the first thing everyone else does is pull out their cameras to record. Right. Come on man, it's sad. If if people were that wanted to attack a brother and they knew that they had all these brothers behind them, would that person get attacked? Would anyone be stupid enough to mess with one of you lot if they knew you had all the rest of you beside them? But then it's funny, like we'll go to places and there'll be people mocking each other. Yo, chat to this guy, chat to this guy, or oh, this guy's an idiot. My friend looks funny. It's dumb, man. It's proper silly. Are, are we doing it? Are we doing the Q&A? Uh, before I hand it on to, uh, over to uh, Eamon, um, if you guys got questions for, uh, for him, do you, do you guys have questions for him by the way? Is there people that want to ask? Not now, not now. I'm going to tell you what to do. Because a lot of the people, they might have questions for him and they'll ask him in private. If you do, get out your phones right now, I'm going to tell you what to do, yeah? There's a website called Slido. S-L-I-D-O, yeah? One second, and I'm on the fi on. As soon as you go onto Slido, it should come up with a reference number. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the reference number, and you, you can put your name. You don't have to put your name, and then you can ask him. One second, I'm just write a ball. You can ask him whatever you want anonymously. If it's if it's private, it doesn't matter. Or you can put your name on it. The reference number is one five one seven four nine four. One five one seven four nine four. For those of you who don't want to put your name, don't send your message privately and at the end we'll answer the questions one by one. Yeah? And one more quick before I, one more thing before I hand it over. I know a brother, yeah? He's in prison right now. But he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, but he was caught up in haram. But one day some, some guys came outside his mom's house. And they were looking in through the garden and they chased his brother, his younger brother, into the house. And obviously anyone would think that time, no, Dan, you need, to, you need to turn and you need to do something. You need to attack these guys. And if he does attack them, is it something honorable? It's something you respect, right? Mm. So then everyone starts thinking, yo, this guy must be a good guy. He must be a bad man. He's, he's, but then the maddest thing is, I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know what, hang on a second, let me, let me go and speak to him. 
All I did is ask him why. Why, why did that happen? He said, oh, yeah, do you know what happened, yeah? Um, I, was, I was out. These youths know that I shot. So they ever need up following my brother trying to find the food in my house. It's not honourable. It's not honourable no more. You're the one who put your family at risk. How can it be honourable if you're the one that put your family at that risk and now there's guys coming to your house because you, you're the one selling drugs and now they want that? See what I mean? There's always silliness. There's always bare backlash with this haram that you lot get up to. It's mad. I'm not saying you lot. But in the area that you lot are in, it's very hard to stay away from drugs and stuff now. Well, it's, it's, it's only hard if you're weak-minded. Inshallah, it doesn't seem like any of you are silly. You, don't, you, don't, you don't, don't need that haram money. Because I'm telling you, with that, with that haram nonsense comes problems. Go and ask a single drug dealer, especially the ones that you know that are in and out of jail. If any of them are happy, none of them are happy. Inshallah, may Allah guide you all. May Allah protect you all. And I'm going to pass it over to Eamon now. Brothers, mashallah, tabarakallah. I'm going to go back to your homes. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I mean, uh, I want to start off by saying all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship, only Him we bow down to, and only Him we turn to when we're in need. And also, I'd like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad. You see, something that upset me on my way coming here is even though there was a brother that's very, very dear to my heart, he called me and said to me, Ya Akhi, understand this is not a, a talk where you normally have a lot of people turning up. This is a talk that's going to have a little bit of people, a lot of people left maybe due to the rain or maybe to their own personal, whatever it may be. Okay, let's make something clear. Every single one of you could get up right now from here and walk away and I, could, and I wouldn't even care. At the end of the day, okay, when I speak, it's a reminder to myself first and foremost. I'm not here because of the crowd. I'm not here because of the numbers that people normally see in the masjid. No, bro. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allocate every single one of you here to be here for a reason. You could walk away today to be very obedient to your parents more than what you are today. At the same time, you could give more in sadaqah. At the same time, you could be fearing Allah even more. At the very same time, you could also be doing what? Getting closer to the Quran and following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that there will come a time where my ummah will be like the foam of the ocean. Like the foam of the ocean. And some of them ask, Alhamdulillah, we're going to be big in numbers. They said, yes, but you're all going to be handpicked at a table like a feast. So this is what's happening today. The Muslim Ummah is being killed left, right and centre. We're being prosecuted. We're being killed. We're being raped. We're being murdered. And you, you, we're being imprisoned. All because of one thing. The fact that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't fear no man, nor do we fear the numbers. Because when you are Muslim, you are Muslim with your actions, akhi. you are Muslim with your etiquettes and your manners. You are Muslim for what's in here, not with your lip service. And we don't condone your lip service. You could say I'm a Muslim and everything you do online and everything you do behind closed doors makes you an ugly person. I couldn't give a damn if you are front row in Fajr Salah. Nah. I don't care. Oh, Jum'a Salah, from Ro, you're there before the Imam. Akhi, I don't care. The matter of fact is, my bro, what we do behind closed doors is what matters. What do we get up to? You see, the youngsters that are here, and I'm glad I'm seeing the youngsters. But at the same time, we've got some adults here as well. What do they get up to? Do they make time for their kids? I don't make time for my kids, bro. And I'm a waste man for that. I'm not the best of fathers. I'm not the best of husband to my wife. I'm failing in that. And the worst thing is, no matter what we do, we'll never be at the very best what we claim to be. You see, when people speak to us, my bro, yeah, ach, you know what? I do this as a husband. I do that. Or I do this as a father. My God, I'm going to tell you right now. This whole summer holiday, I placed things before my family. And that's because I placed you lot before, me, uh, before my family. I knew summer holidays. I wanted to interact with every single youth because this is my part. Yes, I've neglected my family. They understand. Yes, I've neglected my kids and being all over the country, up and down. Does that make me a good husband? Hell no. Does that make me a better father? Of course I don't. You see, we need to put our priorities in place. 
our priority other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and other than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping him and praying our five daily prayers, our priority is our home. You see, charity starts at home. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, it starts at home. So I'm going to ask you, and this is not a reply I want you to actually reply, we're nowhere near the seaside and the birds are already going mad. Relax, brother. <laughs> Seagulls, mashallah. But alhamdulillah wa ta'ala, we're here. Allah has blessed us to be here. Allah has allocated every single one of you here. And I understand you may be sitting there on concrete floor. Akhi, you might get your bum cheeks a bit numb or you might get pins and needles in your legs. But akhi, you're here. You are the next generation, bro. You are the one that's going to make a difference. You are the one that's going to bring people back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because guidance comes through you. Nah. Guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But it is you and your actions and what you do in front of people. And this is a saying I have with me, bro. I leave the house every single morning with one phrase. And the phrase is, be the person why Astaghfirullah Be the reason why someone falls in love with Islam. Be the reason why someone falls in love with Islam. You see, I walk out. I might see a, a non-Muslim woman or non-Muslim man. I'm giving them their away. I say, you know what? God bless you. I don't literally mean God bless you. But you understand, it's good etiquette. You know what? Have a good day. Because you've made the money. You've held the door. You see little etiquette. You see your rubbish on the floor. You already know. Me and you already know. I can place it out, place it in the bin. You see a, a rock where it could be a danger to someone else on the street or to other cars. I can take it out. That's your charity. Walking past someone seeing your brother across the road, smile at him. What religion do you know that gives you reward just for smiling? None. But Islam does that to you. What religion do you know that tells you that if you take things out of the way of people that could be a hazard, we'll reward you for that? None. Except for Islam. And everybody wants to jump on this bandwagon of thinking you're going to be a man. You're going to be the reason why the, you, know, you revived the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is not the case. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And guess what? That train of the deen of Allah to be revived is coming soon, bro. But are you jumping on that train? Or is that train going to miss your stop? Are you going to be the one to say, you know what, I'm ready. Sincerely. From my heart. Through my actions. Through my manners. Through my adab. My manners, akhi. Look how important that is. Am I going to be ready? Am I going to go above and beyond to make sure I'm on that train? Because, bro, that train ain't stopping, ak. Only accept if you're ready for it. Except if you are sincere. With sincerity, my guy. You see, we live in a time and age where like the brother Abu Sufyan mentioned, if there was an issue, Akhi, you first thing that you do, you jump on this bandwagon by um, taking out your phone. Akhi, I remember. Wa alaikum as to you too, old birds. You remember? Yeah? You come out of your way. You come out of your way when there's issues. You take, you take your phones out just to get the views, my bro. There is no men that's left in the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are, but they're very, very hidden. I'm going to ask you, brothers, are you the person that's trying to stop the commotion or are you the person that's making sure you jump on the bandwagon and film with people? And I remember when I got stabbed. Akhi Allah is my witness. When I got stabbed and I'm laying there, all I remember seeing is people taking out their flashlights. Their phones are recording me. Why are you trying to put it online? But this is where we live. And you know where it starts from, bro? Now look at Tower Hamlets. Look at Hackney. Manor Park. Mile End. Uh, White City. Is it White City? No, White City is West London, yeah? Right. White Chapel. All of these areas are here populated by Muslims. And all of these areas are the ones that have a lot of trouble to do with Muslim upon Muslim. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie to you, my smell sense is so, is so good right now. I can smell the drain from over there, a'udhu billah. And it's bothering me. And I said this to the brother, my brother goes, yo, I want to get you some perfume to lay on the moustache. Relaxation, brother, relaxation. 
But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, brothers, man. Allahumma ameen. It is time for you to make a difference, bro. It is time for you to make a difference in this ummah. And that difference is, akhi, you start with yourself. And I understand the Muslims are suffering. I understand the Muslims in the UK are suffering. And the Muslims in Africa and Asia and the Middle East and other countries like Germany and Sweden and Switzerland where Muslims are being, and France where they're taking. Akhi, you're telling you, you need to take off the niqab before going into the schools. You're telling you, you need. to Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq Sheikh Uthman told me directly to my face he said to me by Allah UK is the best place for the Muslims right now in Europe where's our gratitude bro you know how we show our gratitude by throwing it back into society I'm not talking about government I'm talking about society I'm talking about those that are around us whatever actions we're doing on road my guy is affecting our neighbours and I'm talking about our Muslim neighbors. On top of that, our non-believers, what are they doing? They're going out of their way to do what? Making sure that when they go home, they speak bad of the Muslims. MashaAllah, shout out to the brothers that didn't want to sit down. Chairs had to come. Masa prestige brothers, MashaAllah. Allah mubarak. In the situation, me and the brothers here, we went to a talk yesterday in Burnley and while we was in Burnley yesterday we came across Q&A and the Q&A and some of the questions were very disturbing and some of the questions were actually from the people here in front of us here and they were describing a few people in the crowd where this guy is this, this guy smells or this guy is like that or it, they're, mim they're, they're making a mockery of their brother that's in the crowd. Oh, this, guy is, uh, this guy is a waste man and they're all talking about one brother. Is that correct? One brother. And it was coming from all different angles. And this is happening in a masjid, bro. You see, let me tell you something. Akhi. This dunya is like a prison to a believer, like the same way you are in this cage. And there was no other way of going out of here. But you know what Islam told you? Islam told you if you are content with whatever is within this cage, whatever is within this prison that you see around you, akhi, whatever what Allah provided you, whatever Allah provides you with clothing you and, 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 and feeding you, akhi, if you are content with this, then your akhir will be for eternity, inshallah wa ta'ala. If you are content with this cage right now, and I wish, I wish if Allah allowed us, but I told everyone, yo, if we could, bro, on a nice day, let's get our sleeping bags, akhi, and let's all fit in in this cage, akhi. Akhi, I'm not even joking. It's not even a trampy tin, bro. It's the fact that, akhi, we come in this cage and we get to know each other. No one leaves this cage apart from you use the toilet. And I'm not talking about going around the bush and doing your madness. But we stay in this we stay in this cage. And at the very same time, Akhi, we get to know each other. We get to know people's names, their background, their love for this deen, their passion for this deen. What is driving you to come here today, bro? You think I give a damn for anybody that didn't make it? You think I care about numbers, bro? It takes one of you today to inshallah wa ta'ala change a, a, a million lives. But this is up to you. And by Allah, if you are sincere in changing the world, akhi, if you are sincere, with sincere, with, with ikhlas, pure ikhlas, akhi, Allah will make the whole world come at your feet. You see how powerful sincerity is, bro? You see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do for you? So why are we not taking this opportunity? So why is it that we limit ourselves when it comes to du'a as well? What do you mean, Aki Amen? We limit ourselves. Akhi, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us just the job that we went for an interview. Why not ask for the best job? You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, give me a driving license so I could 
drive a car. I can, why do I ask for a license for you to be a pilot, bro? Why are you limiting yourself, bro? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am whatever my servant thinks of me. I am whatever my servant thinks of me, akhi. whatever trial and tribulations you're going through, akhi. if you sincerely believe that Allah is the one that will take you out of it, then Allah will take you out of it. But if you are wishy-washy and 50-50, bro, one for him, one for her in the deen, then akhi, don't expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to, to your aid, bro. Because there's no 100% in your heart. And this is where we begin. You see, everybody wants to see a change. But we have to start with ourselves. We're blaming the Imam. We're blaming the brothers in our community to make sure they make a difference. Let's be real with ourselves, Akhi. What the hell are you doing for the Ummah? What am I doing for the Ummah, bro? It's not enough. I'm one man. We need to come together based on unity. As long as is according to the Quran and the Sunnah and according to the companions with Tabi'een. We don't do no, no, none of this and that. This is not for us as Muslims. We are laymen. It's not for us to think this guy is a kafir, this guy is upon this, this guy is upon that. Who gave you the qualifications to go down that road, bro? The ulama, the scholars are even scared to go down this. But nowadays you got a speaker like myself, a waste man, that has an image, that has an image. His, his followers are growing. So he's probably going to get a bit of gas, because sometimes I do get gas. Let's be real, I can be human. What? I bring it down to zero. I balance it out. What do I do with myself after that? I don't let the dunya get into my heart, bro. Because I'm seeing all of this fame and this and that coming my way. I don't want it. I don't even record my own content. And this is not just to be arrogant. But look at people like myself where we come and the image grows on you. Then the fame comes. Then you start sliding in certain people's DMs. Women sliding in their DMs. It happens on the Dawah scene, bro. Let's not be around the bush. If not, they slide in your DM. Bloody penguins. You get me? On top of that, Akhi, do you know what you do? When a man steps out of his lane by saying, where is haram and haram? Akhi, that's it. They now think you're better than the scholars. What's this, Akhi? <coughs> Must try to make me unlock my phone, Akhi. What's going on? It seems like... No, it's not zero, 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 Akhi. A'udhu Billah. What's going on here? So, Alhamdulillah wa ta'ala, the moment these brothers that are on social media or have a platform, the moment they tell you what's halal, haram, akhi, step away from the bow, them and they will have no qualifications. Or the moment they say to you and give a big ruling such as what? Such as a fatwa. Or if there's an issue with marriage. Akhi, divorce that woman. Sister, divorce that husband. That's when you know, akhi, this is not a man to go to. Akhi, this and so is haram. Akhi, this scholar says this. Akhi, this scholar says that. Akhi, you are layman. You're like me. We don't go down that path and we feel like a lot of men on my comments. Ya Akhi Ayman, it's for Rex Halal. Who am I to give you a reply, bro? Even if I know the truth. Go to your local Imam. Go to your people of knowledge. That's who you turn to. On top of that, who else do you go to, Ak? Who else do you go to? The ulama. If you can't get food to the ulama, you go to your local Imam. If you can't get through to your local Imam, akhi, there's people of knowledge that is amongst us, akhi, that dedicated their whole life of learning this beautiful deen. But like I said to you, bro, you've got to balance yourself. You start with yourself. You follow anyone and anyone, akhi, listen to this, akhi, you follow anyone that is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Upon the understanding of the companions, bro, you go upon that. You follow that. If there's something you don't sure about, because there's a lot of younger generation, bro. Everyone's jumping on the bandwagon of what? Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of TikTok and Instagram. It don't work like that, Akhi. You don't get your deen from TikTok, bro. You don't get your deen from Instagram, Ak. You don't get your deen from Sheikh Google. No. You get your deen from the right sources. As long as they're upon the right manhaj.
I'm not here to tell you what is, on, uh, what is right and wrong. But the deen is making it clear to you, bro. And do you know what that is? Quran and the Sunnah and upon the understanding of this. What? The companions. The tabi'een. And those that come after them. So don't get, I'm telling you, as a man that is on TikTok and a man that is on Instagram, bro, do not get your deen from there. And your imam has been waiting for you, bro. Your imam, your person of knowledge, has been waiting for you to come back to the masjid, Ak. Come back and seek that knowledge that you, that you strive to seek. In. Come back to that masjid and pray your five daily prayers, bro. If you can't pray five, okay, at least pray three in the masjid. If you can't pray three, at least pray one salah in the masjid a day. And you'll see how your life will change. And there was a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stated that if you knew the blessing, the na'mah of only praying Salatul Fajr wa Isha in the masjid, you will come crawling, akhi. I'm not talking about cruelly that's outside London, bro. Not that dusty sea. Nah. I'm talking about crawling to the masjid, my bro. Do you really care? About that na'mah? Do you really care about wanting them blessings? Akhi, I fall short. Sometimes it's hard for me to wake up for Fajr. Sometimes it's very hard, akhi. That don't mean I'm a good person. I mean, sorry, that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. But at the same time, akhi, I know we're struggling. But it is not fair where every single time we go to different seas, do you know what we do, bro? We jump on someone's live. They're talking about everything, every single filth online. They don't jump on live. I don't jump on live on my account. We jump on live with Abu Sufyan's account. We see a group of people. They're being a bit jahil. Abu Sufyan decides to request. We jump in their live. Salaamu alaikum wa alaikum as-salam. What are you man talking about, bro? Talk about girls and money and drugs and shisha and vaping and this and this and that. You get me? And then the moment the camera turns to me, everyone's like this to the camera. Everyone's like this, fam. Everyone's moving out of the way. Why do you move like that when, when, when you know Allah is watching you, bro? Why are you moving like that because you got this dusty waste man, myself, on the camera watching you? Why are you not like that because Allah is watching you? You see, we have become to a stage right now where we fear the creation and their opinions more than the creator. More than the creator. We fear him and his opinion. What he thinks about me. What she thinks about me. We fear that more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks about me. And this is where the change has got to come, bro. But you start today. A million people could have come here today, bro. And no one could have been guided to what I'm saying. And one person could have come here, bro. And he would have made, and he would have gone out there to change a million lives. Islam is not about numbers, akhi. Because if it was my bro, we wouldn't have won that battle of Badr where there was only 30, 313 of us. But due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory, Allah made them become vict uh, victorious. Even though we were outnumbered by double or triple. On top of that, we lost the battle of Uhud. Can anyone tell me why we lost the battle of Uhud? Someone, please. Someone. Huh? They didn't listen to who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They forgot to, not even forgot, they followed their desires, ya akhi. The same way we follow our desires today. And that's the desires of this dunya. That's the, and that's the desires of our ego and our arrogance. That's what's happening, bro. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it clear to them, akhi, no matter what, do not move from this mountain. Do not move. Even if you see us celebrating, do not move. But they moved. Do you know why? They see the Muslim being celebrating. Or they see the Muslim outnumbering the kuffars, the non-believers. And the moment they saw that, they started talking amongst themselves. And said, let's go down there. We see the war booty, yachi. We see it. We see the shields. We see the swords, we see the gold, we see the armor of the non-believers, let's go and collect it. So they chose this dunya over the akhirah. And they went out of their way. 
And they went down the mountain. And when they went down, Akhi Khalid ibn Walid, before he was a Muslim, was the one that came with his horsemen and they trapped the Muslims in order for them to conquer, uh, in order for them to defeat them. And on that, on that battle, guess what happens, my brothers? There was a man that lost. There was a man that got, that got, that got made a martyr. Can someone name him? Huh? Hamza. Radiallahu anhu. Well done, my bro. Hamza. Akhi, a'udhu billah. What's going on? Hamza radiyallahu anhu was made to do what? Fell. Not Safa, not fell. Hamza was made to be a martyr. But would you think that the Muslim failed? The Muslims didn't fail, Ak. And at the same time, do you think that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu failed even though he was hurt? He had a chipped tooth? Nah. All because of the Muslims that forgot, oh no, sorry, stuff I not forgot. All because of the Muslims that disobeyed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now let's look at ourselves and how we can compare ourselves to the people of the Battle of Uhud. The same way they chased the dunya is the same way we're chasing the dunya today, bro. The same way they disobeyed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The same way we're disobeying the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam today. The same way they neglected and put the desires of this dunya, the gold, the flashy cars, the houses, the riba, the girls, you name it, Akhi, we're chasing it the same way they chased it. So we've become the same as those people that were from the battle of Uhud. And let's not lie to ourselves, Akhi. Let's not lie to ourselves, Akhi. This is what it's come down to. So I'm going to ask you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, whoever it may be, are we like the people of Battle of Uhud? I'm asking you. Huh? No. Prove it to me with your actions, bro. Prove it to Allah with your actions, Ak. Prove it that you're making your Akhirah, your Pyre, you know, your dunya. Prove it. Not to me. Not to yourselves. But prove it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prove it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will come a time, bro. We're going to stand in front of Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in your maqiyama, is going to be the only Prophet that's going, to be follow, uh, that's going to be waiting for us. And at the same time, he's going to have his head on, on, on sajda until every single Muslim goes into Jannah. Am I lying to myself, my brothers? Am I lying to myself? After every sacrifice that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has made, why is it that we've disobeyed him throughout our whole life? Our whole life disobeyed his sunnah, disobeyed his struggle. Akhi disobeyed a man that cried for this ummah. He came with one message. That's the message of Tawheed. To follow the Quran and to follow my sunnah and to follow his companions. The predecessors. But how many of us have failed him? How many of us have failed ourselves, bro? What about your soul? Your soul is crying out. Akhi, I see Muslim men, Muslim boys, Akhi, in year seven. In year seven are doing what? They're going out of their way to go into shops and rob vaping. To the level the shop owner now puts the vapes behind the counter. Because young Muslim boys in this borough has decided to go and rob some vapes. So you pick the vaping to please your desires. You've picked the weed to please your desires. You've picked the girls to please your desires. You're chasing the money to please your desires. You've become a drug dealer to please your desires. And this is the reality of a Muslim today, bro. Look around you, Ak. You see my house right now in Mosul. Right now my house in Mosul, Ak is bombarded. There isn't one house in Mosul, in my city, that hasn't been crushed or has got bullet marks all over it. Or has got bomb shelters all over it. So look around, Jack. We're out in the open. Is there going to be any place that's going to be dropping any bombs on us? Nah. We're only here. And the only thing that flies over us right now is those two seagulls on top of that building. So shout out to you. But Alhamdulillah, we're here. Alhamdulillah, they, they're here making more of a difference than we are, bro. And where does it start? 
Start with yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He would not change the condition of the people until they change the conditions of themselves. Until they change the conditions of themselves. Akhi. And let's not laugh about this, bro. Because we've got youngsters here. But I'm going to say how it is. Let's not be around the bush. I'm sorry for the uncle. Allahumma may Allah bless the uncles. I'm, say, I'm, I'm sorry for the organizers. But I'm going to say how it is, bro. Brothers in our day and age, and we get this too. And you could even ask about Sufyan, Akhi. We get this question a lot by men that are even married. And the question is, Akhi, I can't help myself but watch the filthiness that is online. And I'm not talking about Instagram. And I'm not talking about TikTok, bro. I'm talking about that filthiness that only you get to watch alone. I'm not going to mention it due to the youngsters here, but you know what I'm talking about. And if you continue by this watching and doing these filthy acts with yourself, I dare you to record yourself doing it. And then look back on that video and see how scummy you look. But on top of that, I let that video be a reminder that this is the way Allah sees me. And when I say that to a man that actually go out of their way to do this, they say, subhanAllah, I will never do it again. Because you feel scatty, you feel scummy. On top of that, you got other men that go out there to make sure and lie to other sisters. You lie to other sisters. And what do you do when you're lying about, uh, to other sisters? You use and abuse them. You go out of your way to use and abuse them. You're there dealing with another man's daughter. Another man's grandchild, a granddaughter. You lie to her, saying you're going to get married. And shout out to the stupid people online to say, why is Aki Ayman saying, oh, why don't you just marry her? Don't tell, why is Aki Ayman say, dump her, you stupid individual? Why didn't you ask for a hand before you become a girlfriend and boyfriend? So why would you come to a stage, Aki, if something started off haram, Aki, there's no barakah in it. You think you can go and start trapping? Because it's the same thing, bro. Imagine you go start trapping. And you bring that money back to your family and say, yeah, oh my wife, this is it for you. Oh my daughter, this is the money for you that I made through haram. But I want you to be, you know, consuming it. So that money that you get from haram, akhi, you're going to let your wife be consumed through the food that she eats, the clothes that she wears, the rent that you pay. You think there's any barakah in your house, akhi? No wonder you and your wife are going through issues, bro, because there's no barakah in your household. Be real, uh, let's be real, Ak. But man, them think that this fast life is something to chase, bro. I've got drug dealers today that are making four grand a day and they're miserable and they think about suicide on a daily basis. And they're Muslims. And you ask yourself, but Ak is making four bags a day. Four bags, Ak, four racks. He's up. Nah, Ak. There's no barakah in that money, bro. My man's driving this car and that car. He's getting rentals. He's so scared, Akhi, because he's a drug dealer. He's so scared, he changes a car every single month. You know why? He doesn't want to He doesn't want to have a car that is allocated to him directly. Because he doesn't want that car to come back to his house or to his address if someone puts in the number plate. So do you know what they do? They change their car on a monthly basis and every single time... They get a rental car out to go and do their filthy, nasty drug dealing. Wallahi, because there's no barak in it, they crash their car every single month. So before it goes back to the rental company, bro, actually they're spending thousands of pounds just to repair before they come. And we know, and you know when they don't do it? You know when the time is ticking out? Actually, they contact the rental company and say, you know what, I'm away at the moment. Can I extend my car lease for another, what's it called? For another, um... For another month, in order for them to attend to that car before it goes back. This is what's happening in our communities, Akhi. Look at what happened with that Lamborghini Urus. In your ends, bro, in your ends. It went into an innocent man, Akhi. And you know what the man's still suffering from now? I found out, I think two, three days ago, the postman, I found out he hasn't even gone back to work. Because he's so traumatized. The postman had his daughter in the car, in the van. So imagine that. 
Imagine now the Muslim that was driving thinking he's a Rambo Qasmi, bro. Hey, what are? Whatever you man say, this has to go into a name one of them dies, bro. What are you going to do? Now you're putting more of a bad image on top of the Muslims because of your filthy actions, bro, while doing balloons, you stupid individual. And I hope I can see that, brother, you donor. I say, how is it? I give a damn about if I hurt your feelings, bro. Oh, Aki Eamon talks like this, talks like that. Aki, the door is there and the door is there. If you don't like it, go out of your way, bro. Man's not here to please no one, bro. I'm here to please Allah alone. If I'm doing something wrong, because I'm saying it how it is in a harsh manner, Aki, come and correct me, Aki. Come and G-check me. But if this, is, if this is the only way I can get through to the Ummah of this youth and this generation, then I'm going to continue like this and I couldn't give a damn if I hurt your feelings. But this is the harsh reality. And sometimes the only time people will learn the harsh reality, bro, is when? When they get locked up. When they see their mom come to their, uh, what was it called, their cell. When they see their mom travel for hours to come to their prison. And that's when reality hits them because that's when reality hit me, bro. That's what happened to me. Reality hit me, act. My mother came to Joe. And I saw the stress on her head. I saw it on her face. And I saw the fact that she came into the prison with a, with a, with a hijab over her head and establishing the abaya and her modesty as she was being searched. And that was a wake up call for me, bro. It didn't take me to go Joe to change Akhi. Nah. People said, look at this man, man. My man's gone to jail. Now he wants to start preaching and changing his way. Nah, bro, it wasn't prison that changed me, my guy. It was making sure it's not me that's doing the sentence, as one of the brothers around me says. He says, it is your family that's doing the sentence, Akhi. It's your family that is doing the real sentence, Akhi, at home, even though they got freedom. But this is how we suffer, Ak. We suffer because we make other people suffer. And you know who's the last people to suffer? Ourselves. We're the last people to suffer. Don't you sometimes just cry? Don't you sometimes just cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And say, I'm sorry, O oh Allah. I'm sorry for this pleasing you. And I'm sorry for every single time that I disobeyed you, you still clothed me. I'm sorry, oh Allah, for every single time I displeased you, you made sure I was fed. For every single time I displeased you, you made sure I woke up as a Muslim. You still chose me to pray my five daily prayers. You still chose me to have that title of being a Muslim. So I thank you, Allah. What about thanking each other? The pro, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who hasn't, whoever hasn't thanked the people, and let me say a big thank you to the brothers that are organizing this, bro. Every single brother here, Akhi, not you. Akhi, you're part of the Bengali badge, so yes, you do. So, for the brothers that are here, organizing it, staying away from their wives, staying away from their uh, kids, they made sure they came here, even if it was raining, they said, I care about the younger generation, so I'm going to make sure I'm still here. I love the younger generation, so I'm going to make sure I'm here. I see a vision for, the, for this generation, so I made sure I'm here. So do not throw it back in their face. So a big thank you to the uncles, to the organizers, to the volunteers. Thank you for every single one of you that's here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever hasn't thanked the people hasn't thanked me. When was the last time you thanked your parents, bro? When was the last time you hugged your mother, Akhi? At the age of 22 years old, a man came to me after my talk and said to me, Akhi, it's been a Akhi, I've never ever hugged or kissed my mother on the forehead in 22 years. Have you? Are you going to start doing that? Akhi, we went to Southampton, me and the brothers. And you know, everywhere we like to go, everywhere we like to go, we like to speak to the organizers and say, bro, who do you want us to speak to? 
Who is a bad breed in your area? Who is the one that calls himself a bad bee? Bring them to me. We go to their home, Akhi. We see one guy has a loving mother and a father. A man that sacrificed everything under the sun to please his, uh, uh, to, to please his kids. A man that did and many jobs in order for them to make sure that they got food on the table. Then the son comes in the room. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Akhi. How are you? I'm okay. Akhi, can you sit down? We'd like to talk to you. Okay. He sat down. What's the issue, my bro? How, how old is he? 18? 18 or 19? The Southampton 19. one. 19 years old, bro. Do you know what he said? He said, I'm going to stop praying for one day and see the difference in my life. So he stopped praying for one day. He saw no changes. So he said, let me try two days. So he stopped praying for two days. Five daily prayers, bro. He stopped doing it. Two days. No, no change. So we said to him, Akhi, how long have you stopped praying for, bro? He said, it's been about three, four years now. What do you do? Headbutt him, slap him. What do you do? What do you do? Where do you, where do you begin? Akhi? And on top of that, he picked a girl over his parents. Some dusty little girl that's got a woman, that's, that's got a mad name in the hood. Got a mad name in the hood. Everybody knows her for you know what. The size of figure is falling in love with her. You're not a man, bro. You picked her over your parents. You're not a man, Ak. You made sure that on top of that, she is the reason why even though she's with other men, you, she's the reason why you stop praying. A woman that don't even wash herself, Akhi, because she ain't Muslim, my guy. Let's not be around the bush. And the brothers might be thinking ahead. Alhamdulillah, man. At least I've got Fatima, man. She washes herself. Shut up, man. That's someone else's daughter. That's my sister. And if I see wrong in front of me, I'm going to approach that couple. And if you are a couple and I see you holding hands, Akhi, that drain stinks, bruv. I can't deal with it. Because I've got issues with my nose. Everything becomes very, very sensitive. I can smell it extra. But if I see you wrong, I will try to change it. And if I can't change it with my hand, is it, where is it? The hand or the speech first? No, with the speech. And if I can't change it with my speech, as the hadith mentions, I change it with my hands. And I'm not talking about being physical, you know, grabbing my man up. No. You go towards him, talk to him as, your, as, a, as a brother. And if I can't change it, then I will change it with my heart and I make dua for them. Akhi, we're not superheroes, bro. Nor are we no Marvel or DC characters. Akhi, we're Muslims. And the brothers here, every single one of you are part of the Aki Avengers, my brothers. <laughs> you men are my brothers. Yeah. What do you mean this guy, Akhi? I'm saying it how it is. And this is why I love you, brothers. Wallahi, daily love you, bro. You lot are going to go home. You're going to go back to a mother that is loving and a caring. You're going to go back to a father that's loving, caring, and has sacrificed every bit of himself in order to have food on the table. But you know what? We've got to change ourselves, Akhi. Because the Aki Avengers would never be victorious unless we change the conditions within ourselves. You want to jump on this bandwagon and making a difference for the world? Or you want to be part of these dusty Marvel or DC characters, Akhi? Be part of Aki Avengers, my bro. Make a change within your souls. Let's start praying our five daily prayers, bro. If you can't pray your five daily prayers, Akhi, start with one. The next day, start praying two salats. Until you start becoming and you see the fruits of salah. This brother's been four years, Akhi. Four years he hasn't prayed. And he thinks and there's no change. He thinks, Akhi, there's no stress in my life. God forbid he dies upon that, bro. Because you're going to die as a kafir. The Prophet Muhammad said it clearly, bro. He says it clearly. What does he say? He says the difference between us and the non-believers is Salah. And I'm not here to call you a kafir, bro. I ain't even got a status 
اخي مستيس از لوور ذان ذان ذس سبحان الله مستيس از لوور ذان ذس نايك سليبرز ام ويرين رايت ناو برو اي جوت نو ستيس ذس از جوت ا بيجر نيم ذان مي سو ام تيلين يو اخي وي نوت هير تو ميك ا وي نوت هير تو بي ديفرنت بوت وي هير تو ميك ا ديفرنس سو ام اسك افري سينجل ون اوف يو يا And I want you to shout this out because I say this everywhere I go. Let it be known, Akhi, to the people that say Muslims or not. Let it be known where you stand. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you three questions, and I say this everywhere I go. Ask this, yeah. And I want you to say it with passion, Akhi. I want you to say it like you're standing in front of Allah. Who is your Lord? Allah. Akhi, you lost sleep. Akhi, go home. Go home. I'm gonna ask again. Who is your Lord? Allah. Where is your deen? Islam. And who is your prophet? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Akhi, go and live by that. Nothing else, bro. Nothing else. Go and live by that. And you will see the way Allah subhanahu wa taala will move mountains out of your way, bro. You see Allah subhanahu wa taala the same ocean that He split for Musa alaihi wasallam. You see what Allah would do for you. Yes, we we know they were prophets and they and their status are up here. We are nobody to them, but Akhi, they were still human. And we're still human. My miracle that I compare to Musa alayhi salam is the miracle when the doctors told me I can never have a kid, and Allah gave me a child, bro. That's what Allah done. That's what Allah done for me. Then you got scummy, scummy Muslims online telling me, "Akhi, your wife cheated on you, bro. The doctors told you that you can never have kids. So how is your wife pregnant?" I dare you to come to my face, bro. I dare you. Man thinks I'm this guy. Oh, I'm not because I start preaching and talking and bringing people to the to the talks. Akhi, I'm not here to do violence. Akhi, Islam is not based on men where they could walk over you, bro. We're not softies, bro. We're not this man where people could take advantage of us. Akhi, Akhi, we are lions, bro. Lions. And when we war, we war la ilaha illallah. That's what we war. I live by it. We don't care about the attacks they're doing, Bakhi. Let them talk verbally, bro. Let a man diss you. Let a man call you every name under the sun, my guy. But if they come in front of you and they think they can take you down, Bakhi, show them what being a Muslim is all about. Show them. But now you got men that are soft. Ah, oh, bro, you know what? It's not for us. I can make du'a for him. Shut your damn mouth, bro. You're one of the reasons why our Muslim sisters are getting attacked. Like we're softies, like we're some carpets you could walk all over. Show them that you're Muslims, bro. Stand for one another. I couldn't give a damn where you're from: Bengali, Pakistani, Somali, Iraqi. I can. I don't care. I don't care what color you are. This from where are you from? Bangladesh. Light Bengali, dark Bengali. Same country, bro. Same country. You know what brings them together, Akhi? La ilaha illallah. People from the same mama and dad, and they're two different texture tones, Akhi. Their skin is two different tones. This is the miracle of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Dusty feminist online thinking that we we look down on our women. You flipping waste, man! It is Islam that honoured the Muslim woman, and it is you that are making the women be half naked, and you think that they are free for other men to use them as an as an object and to commit zina with their eyes with that woman. And you want to come and tell us that we're the one that are oppressing our women? But we need to change our ways, bro. Change starts today. Change starts today. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless every single one of you. Allahumma amin. And may Allah use you as a tool. The same way the construction workers have the tools on site. May Allah use you, you as a tool. To benefit the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and shout out to the boys that are going there, out there doing da'wah, making sure I got nothing against speakers corner, bro. I got nothing against anybody that has been in anyone towards Islam. 
But what about those that are leaving Islam, bro? Why have we neglected them? We're thinking about people coming in through the front door. Actually, there's people leaving through the back door of Islam, my guy. You know why? Because they feel neglected. They feel unloved. They feel ununited. A man them saying, Alhamdulillah, my man's got about the 10 shahadas on my back. Like, how much Muslims did you save from leaving the Ummah, bro? And this is why I don't rate, and I'm going to say this to you, man, as well, bro. And I'm putting it out there myself. Akhi, do not listen to anybody that puts doubts in your Islam. Do not listen to anybody that puts doubts in your Islam, in this deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has perfected this deen, bro. And perfected it for you. And he's perfected it for me. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us die upon la ilaha in Allah. So I'm going to ask you right now, brothers, yeah? Without saying, without, akhi, make sure your lips are not touching each other. Yeah? Make sure your lips are not touching each other, yeah? So like this. Yeah? And I want every single one of you right now to say, without moving your lips, la ilaha illallah. Say it. You see how easy it is, bro? Even if you get put in a situation where you are paralyzed, you can still say la ilaha illallah without even moving your lips. La ilaha illallah. You see, Akhi, if you don't live by the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the companions, this la ilaha illallah will not come out of your mouth. Let's make that clear, bro. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khairan for every single one of you for coming here. Yeah. And Jazakallah khairan, obviously we're going to do some Q&A, but Jazakallah khairan for every single one of you that wants to make a difference, bro. Akhi, I understand. You're tired. Akhi, I under I'm tired, bro. I'm tired of putting my soul, my nafs, through this. But let's change our ways, Akhi. Let's start praying on time. Let's make a difference, my bro. Come on, Akhi. Come on, bro. The Ummah was suffering because of the nastiness we're getting up to behind closed doors. Let's change, inshallah, man. I love you all for the sake of Allah. We're going to take some QA, inshallah. Happy days. Now, there's two questions straight away that we're not going to answer, but the people that ask these questions after the Salah come to us at the front, yeah. But one of them is asking about defending your mom against your dad, if you get to me. Inshallah, that's a bit not something I'm going to discuss like this. Akhi, not even discuss with us, by the way. Not even discuss with us. Let's make it clear, Akhi. You discuss with the people of Noja. I'm not here to tell you to go and rough up your dad, bro. Come and smack you up if you rough up your dad. Let's make that clear, bro. It's not upon us to raise our hands on our father, regardless of what they do behind closed doors on our mother. But you go to people of Noja, you speak to the Imam, and you deal with it like that. We're not here to tell you what's halal and haram. Let's make that clear, Akhi. We're all lame in here. You get me, yeah? Khalas. The situation is different to find. You can't just... Give a general answer of these kind of things. Yes, that something. man's out here online breaking their neck and thinking what's halal haram. We don't do them things, brother. Too busy telling about what McDonald's is halal or haram. Um, and another one is someone asking about what is it? Uh, the someone's provides with drug dealing money to their mom and stuff like that. That person, same thing, because what to do? No baraka. Come and speak to us afterwards as well. But even then, yeah, there's no baraka. There's no baraka, bro. And guess what? If your mom feels ill, or if you get ill, or your other siblings get ill, I can question where you're coming, where, where you're getting that money from, bro. Even riba, money of interest, there's no baraka in there. I mean, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon of doing riba today, bro. Ask me, bro. That's a finance car, bro. Oh, you know my house? It's a mortgage, bro. And you wonder why there's no barakah in our lives. You're going to war with Allah. Go on, Akhi. Yeah, so those two people will come and see us after, inshallah, yeah? Uh, so one of the questions is, I want to learn more about hadith, uh, ayahs from the Quran, and um, get better at giving debates. Where, how can I do this? Where Habibi, first and foremost, Muna, I need you. I need you, bro. I need you, bro. Khalas. I need him still. My brother, coming from someone that deals with the non believers, yeah? And I you. Chest, I love chest. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 okay, he, the brother, the brother, the brother needs to. Because no one can see him, mashallah, tabarakallah. Muna, Muna, bismillah. Bismillah. So basically, Wuna, 
The brother mentioned, how can I learn the hadith from the Quran in order for me to debate? You see, you're from someone that actually deals with the non-believers, my brother, yeah? So, how hard is it if you don't know anything, especially when they come to you with a question, and you're like, oh man, I was caught off guard, like, like, and you know, I know, I know the brothers come from a good place, by the way, yeah? They want to make a difference, and they want to debate against those that are cursing Allah, and that are cursing the Prophet Muhammad, so so but in reality, this is, needs to be dealt with and put in a, uh, you know, put forward to people with knowledge to deal with this, correct? Yes. So please, so please answer this, Akhi, please. So when it comes to debating, you have to understand there's a Christian way of doing things and there's an Islamic way of doing things. Me personally, I don't believe in debating. Because the only, when it comes to debating, this is a Christian way of propagating the message. What we do is do da'wah, which is inviting people to Islam. Islam. There's no debating in mm. that word da'wah. It's invitation to Islam. So when you're talking to the person and it's not an invitation, Naam. you're yelling at them, you're cursing at them, this is not da'wah. Okay, so I want to make sure that's extremely mm. clear. So and people who are debating and yelling at one another, this is not da'wah. Right? I told them you don't have to prove nothing to them. And obviously, as Muslims, we hold the one truth. So since we have the truth on our side, we don't need to argue and do all this stuff with them. We simply warn them of the truth. If they decide to accept it, they can. If they decide to disregard the truth, Allah is going to question them on the Day of Judgment. We are simply warners of the truth. Okay? So another thing too, obviously, educate yourself. You know, obviously, we have the mashaykh, we have the scholars. You learn from them and learn obviously the right way from the no. right scholars no. um and when it comes to propagating the message of islam i highly recommend people to obviously read the translation and the tafsir of the entire quran and understand the stories of the prophets Allah starting with adam -Islam, and then ending with our beloved prophet muhammad Sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi 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 perfect. Okay? perfect so this is something that i highly recommend and just remember our job is to invite people to Islam. And anyone who curses Allah or the Prophet of Allah, you have no business speaking to those individuals. Facts. Because they're not here to accept the truth. So any person that does that to curse Allah and the Prophet of Allah, if you continue speaking to them, it's going to get worse. It, according to me, you're one of them. So I, I personally, I don't discuss with people <coughs> Allah and the Prophet of Allah. No. And I believe in the Quran, it says as well, that people who do curse Allah and the Prophet of Allah, if they don't change the conversation, you cannot have, you cannot have discussions with them. Yeah. May Allah bless you. No, did you hear that? Yeah? He's from America, yeah, so it's hard to understand. Like, tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll translate it. <laughs> no, nah, but Allahumma barik, he put it very, in a very, very well man. This is a man that deals, you know, on social media, he's called I am the warner. You can tell why with these big ass. You know what I'm saying? Yourself. Look at him. <laughs> Allahumma barik, akhi. This guy's a giant, akhi. I don't know how much green peas he's had, but he's out there, yeah? But like, like I said to you, he said it. Akhi, change the conversation. And you're not nobody, akhi, a person of knowledge, but if they start to curse the Prophet, what are you going to do, bro? You're going to entertain it by letting them be. Akhi, walk away from it. I've seen him give that word to non-believers, akhi. And I told you this now, bro. They are cursing Allah. He goes, you know what? Thank you. God bless you. No worries. No worries. He can't tell them. No worries. He ignores them and moves on to someone else. You see the etiquettes. If, and I've seen him, because there's been a couple of fights, if you see on YouTube of him, well, I don't know who wants to fight this big fella. Yeah? But when they become physical with him first, he puts them in their place. Like I said to you, Islam is not about people taking advantage of us, bro. Problem comes to us where we feel threatened, you deal with it. But we never ever be the one to oppress people, bro. Remember that. Good about doing this. Okay. So we're doing some QA right now. Alhamdulillah. Um Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad. There's quite a few uh, questions here from the brothers that are Alhamdulillah here. Should I do this? Should I do this to have it? Call this. It's me already. You can't mute it in your life. Um don't put it like that when you I'm can't see it. To give it to to give it to happen. So basically, for brothers that are still, actually, what's the code? What's the code? No, no, no. There's enough questions. Bro. There's enough questions. Yeah, we're gonna go through the questions now, inshallah, to make sure we can go through it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, quickly, so we're going through the Q and A. One of them, um, 
my brother can't my brother started to sell drugs because he couldn't get any jobs he was struggling and he feels like his mom was struggling and he started to sell drugs to help her he wants your advice on that Akhi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that can provide for you and your mother and your family and you've decided to take the risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you quicker than when it is written for you Akhi, just understand this is it better for your mother to go out of her way to come out of her way so is it is it better for your mother to go out of her way to come and visit you in prison because you're a drug dealer or is it better that your mother still sees you around and for you to get a job and there is jobs out there bro don't lie to yourself Zahi. there's jobs out there for you bro you can work in the charity sector you can work with anyone and everyone bro don't don't let's not lie to ourselves bro do you understand it's easy for you and if I was saying, if the brother's here, I believe he's here because of she's saying that, my brother, you need to fear Allah to your best of your abilities, bro. Because what you're doing is destroying people's lives by giving them drugs. You are the one that's making sure that they are fiends, addicts, drug addicts, nitties, whatever you want to call it, because of what you're providing. And don't, don't, don't turn around and say, Akhi, you know what? Because I myself... Because I myself will stop drug dealing, you think they're not going to go and get drugs from somewhere else? Actually, the fact that you're a Muslim should be enough for you to stop. Just that. You get me? You know something, man? I heard this, yeah? A mother, there are women out there, mothers, <coughs> all night like making the answer, Allah cursed the one that introduced my son to drugs. You may stop selling drugs. That person is going to carry on using drugs. And Still, the woman is cursing the one who introduced their son to drugs. It's mad, man. Don't underestimate that. Oh, mama, especially when I'm pressing my friends for a lot. And even Allah cursed the one that introduced their son to drugs. Two more, two more questions. I'll be praying. We're going to pray. All right. And another one is, um, how do I know if my friend circle is good for me? And how do I get better practicing brothers around me? My dear respected brothers, yeah? Any single person that doesn't bring you closer to Islam, closer to this deen, closer to following the Quran and the Sunnah, closer... Hello? 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 MashaAllah. You see? You see, you see how shaitan works? Speak loudly. Yeah? You see how shaitan works, Akhi? You don't need a microphone. It's loud anyway. Okay. So basically, anyone that brings you away from the deen of Allah, Akhi, is a person that doesn't want good for you. Anyone that tells you to come back to the deen of Allah, to come back to praying five daily prayers and come back to actually worshipping Allah the way he deserves to be worshipped and fear Allah the way he deserves to be feared, it's a man that's a good company, bro. You accept him and you hold on to that friend, my, uh, my brothers. You hold on to that friend and inshallah you go far with him. You feel me? So make sure you do that inshallah wa ta'ala. So if someone that takes you away from Allah now, actually question your friendship with him. Question how much that brother actually cares for you, bro. Because he doesn't really care for you if he's telling you to displease Allah, akhi, or showing you a couple of DMs from girls, or a couple of DMs he slid into, or what drug he's smoking, or what vaping he's trying to steal. Akhi, that friend ain't good for you, bro. And I think we should do one more question, akhi, because it's for Salah time, because the brother mentioned too. The last question, which is a common question, it's funny enough, we get asked huh. everywhere we go. I have someone in my family that's passed away and I'm struggling on dealing with that. I don't know how to deal with it. It's really depressing. What was your advice? Akhi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, when you hear the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have good etiquette of a Muslim, you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So first and foremost, make sure you do that. Secondly, Akhi, bro, your mother, your father, your siblings. Just yesterday, the brother that wanted to speak to me for two minutes, Akhi, he dragged me aside and said to me, my bro, my mother just had a miscarriage with my brother. And it was a late birth. Like, it was, it was, it was far. He said that she had a miscarriage with my brother. And I said to him, my bro, that brother is not allocated to you, nor does it belong to you. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raju'oon From Allah we belong To Allah we belong And to Allah we shall return 
You're not a property of yourself, Akhi. Nor is your mother or father. Nor is your siblings and your friends that are sitting next to you, Akhi. You are the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You belong only to Him and not to yourself, Akhi. My mother returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am content that she died upon La ilaha illallah. I am content that she died upon the deen of Allah and she died as a Muslim. You know what? Let me rephrase that, Akhi. She didn't die, Akhi. She returned back to Allah. Her soul is forever living. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our souls in Jannat al Fardos for eternity. That we are not those that we that, that spent our little moments in Jahannam where Allah then handpicks us and puts us in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are under His shade. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of the grave. Allahumma ameen. We ask the brothers say ameen, bro. With passion. My brothers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of Yawma Qiyamah, the punishment of the grave. The, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us when we return back to Him. Jazakallah khairan for your time. Barakallahu feekum. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you the change you wish you want to see in this world, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaykum. Fi